iGEM is the International Genetically Engineered Machine Competition. Groups of primarily undergraduates get together and they identify some cool projects that they might do using synthetic biology techniques, using particular types of pieces of DNA, and they try to make something. This summer I was really blessed to have 13 students on the iGEM team. We had five fantastic students from Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, and eight equally wonderful students from Stanford University. We have bioengineers, we have computer science people, we have design people. Everyone has their own expertise that they're able to share with the rest of the team and help us make our project the best that it can be. The Stanford Brown iGEM team in general was trying to answer three main questions of astrobiology. The first is where did we come from? The second, where are we going? And the third, are we alone? The Hell Cell Project was attempting to answer the first question, where did we come from? Well, the idea behind the Hell Cell Project is, can we create a toolkit of genes that we can put in an organism that would allow it to live in any extreme condition? It could be extreme cold, extreme heat, acid, radiation, basic conditions. We specifically were able to get genes from various organisms that allowed E. coli to survive under desiccated and basic conditions. Something we use is a bacteria called Bacillus. It has a few mechanisms that we know it uses for heat resistance. Why don't we take its genes that it already has to do that, let's kind of cut and paste them, so to speak, and make them something we can put in anything else that we would want to use for that purpose. Team Biomining is built on the premise that when you go into space, you're going to need to mine or recycle metals. So to address this problem, we wanted to find a way to introduce a metal ion binding bacteria. So what we did was we put metal binding sites on flagellin, which is a protein that congregates into many, many flagellins to make a flagellum on a bacterium. So if you can imagine like our little biomining bacteria with uh, metal binding sites on their flagella, and they just collect metal ions as they swim around. It allows us to then shear off the flagella and keep these bacteria alive. For traditional mining methods, you'd have to bring up large, heavy equipment to space, but instead, if we use biomining methods, we can bring up a small tube of bacteria and grow our bacteria in space and then have them do the mining up there for us. One of the things we're looking at is recycling old computer parts. You know, it would be especially necessary to do that up in space where everything you bring up has this huge price tag attached to it. But even at home, computer components have a lot of rare metals in them. The Earth is running out of these extremely fast. Venus life, it's cool, it's extraterrestrial, we're talking about terraforming, we're talking about science fiction and Carl Sagan, but on a very practical level, we're also creating a set of tools that we can use to start testing the limits of life. Back in its early history, Venus, the Earth, and Mars were actually very similar planets climate-wise. And then on Venus, we kind of see this runaway greenhouse effect, the oceans evaporated, and the planet just got superheated. It's extremely hot, there are like blistering, acidic winds, lots of pressure. Don't go there for your summer vacation. 50 to 60 kilometers up in the atmosphere, we have a much more temperate region with all the elements necessary to house life. We developed these genetic reporters, put this in a suspension chamber to verify if bacteria can indeed survive and thrive in an aerosolized environment. Even if we can't find life in the clouds there, you still have now this ability to test life elsewhere, whether it's like pollution here on Earth, or radiation waste, or asteroids, or upper atmosphere. This just provides a really robust litmus test to see the viability of life in all sorts of extremes. I think iGEM and synthetic biology in general has this art-like character where the possibilities are endless. Uh, iGEM has really helped me put failure in perspective. When you read about science, it's usually like, oh, we discovered this, we made this. But behind the scenes, there's actually a lot of failure that goes on. And really, I guess iGEM has taught me to take those failures and make something out of them. We're all teammates, we're all at the same level. There's no sense of seniority or hierarchy, which is a very refreshing take on working at a team. When push comes to shove, if you're just really excited about your own science, but you don't get it out to other people, then it doesn't mean anything. So that's what iGEM is about. 
to share your work with others and to hear what they have to say as well. There is this idea that maybe we could create something by accident in the lab that would wipe out the human race, but often there is this fear of the unknown, and the more you learn about it, the more you see that the things we're working with, these bacteria, are things that already live in your stomach. You can kill them with a shot of vodka. We are indeed starting to enter this new age where we can engineer life, and it's really great if we could get people to start thinking of life in these new ways. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and we're taking that first step into this new field of synthetic astrobiology.